Yeah, we're definitely not back at the table, and uh, nobody has picked up the phone to call me. I mean, I know that uh, he's involved in hearing what's going on with the WGA, uh, but um, I'm not really understanding what the silent treatment is anyway. I don't get that. I don't know why it took almost 100 days for them to speak to the WGA. And, um, and I can't even begin to guess what it is, but I do get the uh, firsthand experience tells me that they're very tactical people. Well, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, they could be arguing amongst themselves. Uh, you know, basically, they, they're in competition with each other. And then they came together to do this collective bargaining. But in reality, they're in opposition of each other, each one trying to do better than the other. So when they come together in a room, it doesn't necessarily make for the best kind of group collective decision making. And then the other thing is, I mean, it's, uh, I think it could be a tactical strategy to see if we, they can wait us out until we lose our resolve. And then they can make a better deal for themselves because we're more desperate or because our members are not being as supportive as they were in the first several weeks or months. But I, this is an inflection point. I don't think anybody that's in charge at the AMPTP quite understands that this is not like any past negotiation. Uh, we're in a whole new ball game. And uh, if things don't change radically, quite frankly, um, I think that they're going to ultimately get very hurt by this strike. Mm -hmm. And if, if they can... I got just twist it and yeah, it could happen. Why is it so hard to get to? I don't know. That was... Well, at one point, they weren't these big mega companies. I mean, when I started on the nanny at CBS, that was still a family-owned business. And you knew who the owners were, and you could talk to them. And, it, and, and everything has changed subsequent to those years. And I'm very grateful that I got my big break during that time and not this time. Um, but um, right now, when you have a business model where all the CEOs are more connected to the shareholders, um, and not to the people that actually make the product that they're selling, you know, I think that you have a breakdown that is um, unsustainable. And I think that even from a shareholder point of view, I don't know how involved they are in understanding what the companies that they invest in is. I always try and inform people of, uh, you know, what some businesses do that are egregious or bad for the planet. And you should know that you may be making a fast buck now, but if they're a major polluter to the planet in the long run, you're part of the problem, not the solution. And you're, you and your family are, are gonna be hurt by it. So we all have to think about what we're investing in and what the credo of these companies are and how they do treat uh, their uh, workers. Mm -hmm. It's really important because um, we're not living in feudal times and uh, they're not land barons and we're not serfs and um, 
things have to pivot. I mean, I, listen, it doesn't matter if it ultimately ends up an AMPTP project if they have to honor our proposals. That's the whole point. We don't want to not be in business with the AMPTP. We want them to yield to the deal. And if the independents are willing to do it, it does a number of things in our favor. It's strategic, the um, interim agreements, because the independents have to agree to our proposals. What does that do? Well, it helps everybody that's working on those projects because they've never made as much money as they're going to make on that project. And it shows the AMPTP that we're not being unrealistic, but we're actually being fair and thoughtful to our member body. And then it also puts journeyman performers and crew uh, back to work. So they have opportunities to work. Uh, but the caveat to it is that up and down the ladder, you have to honor our last proposal. So uh, there's really no downside to it. Um, we uh, needed to get our communication out better because we saw that there was a little bit of a breakdown. And it was very important that we came to the forefront because Hey, nobody wants to cross a picket line. Nobody wants to do the wrong thing. Um, it, this is a very big journey that we're on, and it's really important, and we're learning in real time uh, what is required because even Duncan said in his 25 years at the union, he's never seen anything explode quite like this. And everywhere that I go, um, lay people that aren't in the business at all say good luck with the strike. And then workers, wherever I go, who are not in the business say thank you for what you're doing. Because we're on the front lines, but everybody that's employed is right behind us. So I, I think that, uh, you know, the, I don't think that you're seeing um, big name people uh, reneging or not moving forward with projects at this point because I think that there's a greater understanding of uh, the interim agreements and and a realization that actually helping journeyman performers and crew uh, have opportunities for work is going to maintain our resolve. We don't want to get caught in a place where we feel like we have to compromise our principles because people are desperate to get back to work. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for work that is not the AMPTP. Yeah. So let them feel a little marginalized for a change and uh, let everybody else have a renaissance. Mm -hmm. <laughs>